Hello, everyone. Welcome to another siblings reaction video. My name is Wingless Dragon, and with me I have Morticia Melian. Woo! Uh, thank you for all the comments on the previous React videos, especially for Jing Recipe. We also learned some new tidbacks of information and compliments. Tidbacks? <laughs> tidbacks. Yeah. Thank you for all the tidbacks. Yeah, it's much appreciated. It's pretty much motivation for continuing this in the way we are heading and how we're approaching it. I know I personally thought we would talk too much, but apparently a lot, some of you like that we talk so much. Definitely appreciate the comments that were provided, especially how we're presenting these as well. So we'll definitely continue in that regards. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment comment in this video as well your likes your dislikes of the video or the dream smp animatics done by saddest yeah let's keep discussion and the talks rolling i enjoy responding to everyone if you want to be able to have a response from me or uh, from morticia we'll definitely indicate it in the comment section and if you found that this video was great please don't hesitate do a like thumbs up even more so if you'd like to keep following us go ahead and hit that subscribe button we very much appreciate it thank you very much for everyone that's already joined the den Yay. And with that, let's start with reaction to the animatics by Saddest. I've said it before, but Saddest has done great animatics. And this is the animatic where she goes from doing great to doing fantastic because this is where she's actually started utilizing a much better program. One of the commenters from uh, the last video indicated that she was actually using basically a phone app. And I was able to confirm that. So that's actually crazy. And you're going to see in this one that there's a huge shift in like the quality, especially in the details of stuff. And that's that's really what I'm looking forward to uh and compares onto our first video for Jim SMP. Exactly. You can check our last react for that. Yeah. If you haven't had a chance already, we already have a reaction video to Hog Hunt. That was our first one. And then we started back on to her first in the series, which was uh, the Dream SMP War. Now we're on the fall. Yeah, Dream SMP, the fall. So someone's is falling or it's just the season. No, you'll see. That's the reason why uh, I'm curious to see if you'll pick up on things or not. And we'll go from there. Warning, the following video may contain spoilers. <laughs> Am I a villain in this story? Probably. Yes, probably. I'm drive home the idea that this celebration a two way, yes, will be a that has been brought forth by my orange guy. A celebration of democracy. Killing Schlatt wouldn't do anything. <laughs> democracy and killing Schlatt. Killing Schlatt wouldn't fix a single thing. And of the new. I didn't realize he has horns. It wouldn't have mattered if you killed him or not. Okay, me and you, we both agree we're right. We're, we're in the right. I mean, yeah, I'm always in the right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be the bad guys. Let's be the bad guys. My first decree. I'm gonna shoot you right now. As the president of the man bird. You know how we started this together, right? The Dream War, then we followed Wilbur and he started the Man Bug. Yeah, let's start more drama. The details are just so gorgeous. My great unfinished symphony. Oh no. Will, Will. It's to revoke! Yes, sir. Wilbur, son! And Tommy in it. Such you're good scared. transition. Tommy, you're scared that people are going to think differently of you. Tommy, when I said you're never going to be president, you got to understand that wasn't that wasn't a challenge. That's true. You're never going to be president, Tommy. But wanna, you're being a moron, Wilbur. I want to ask. You're being I'm, insane. I'm thinking. They're all nets. Uh, are you happier? Dream. I want to be your vassal. Wilbur. Hand me that thing. I mean, I, I'll have to step in. <laughs> Dream is so <laughs> underperforming. If we can't have Manberg, no one, no one can have Manberg. And I hate to say it to you. It's my van. No one gets the van. And there's one thing I have that you'll never, ever, ever have. I have the blade. Don't touch it. Tommy, the Woo! thing you're using words. But the thing about Wait, that's when they introduced techno. Is that the only universal language is violence, and we've had that conversation. We've spoken that language in the pit. It's techno over blade time. never On dies. To a, new day, a new plot to destroy Manberg. Wait, shot. Be safe. 
Well, they said he wasn't gonna hurt me. We need Laman for back. I think it's like the first girl in the whole series that we hear. We're gonna go into the explanation mode now, <laughs> and uh, as to the reason why. Okay. As the Dream SMP has moved along, new characters have showed up, new people have been added, and they began being involved in the whole uh, Dream SMP roleplay. So that's why this is at the time where they started introducing more characters to kind of move things along. To give a quick explanation of this period of the Dream SMP, the last fight basically solidified that Lamember gets created. You then have Tommy in it and Wilbur, who are basically sort of controlling everything uh, unilaterally, but then Wilbur wanted to start an election being like okay let's make it democratic so that it's fair so that people elect wilbur officially is that where the whole pog thing started no it's it's after okay let me see if i can Good get man. to the I drive home the idea let's pause here just so we have Eric, nikki and Bundy. Bundy. so they basically had a quick election uh, i'm not going to go into the details of the the wackiness that happened during the election but basically when they brought in jay schlatt he Jason. joined coalition with another group to get the majority votes so he basically took over Lamanberg from Tommy and Wilbur. And with that, his first decree, which is indicated in the fall, is to kick them out. At this celebration. Basically, at this point, he ends up kicking out Tommy and Wilbur. And with that, they create an underground location called Pogtopia to build up a resistance to take back Lamanberg. Against the evil take dictator of a Saudi election? Okay. Well, he's not a dictator because he got voted in democratically, but I, I kind of like... Okay, d democratic elected authoritarian. Sure. So <laughs> needless to say, he got put into power and it was through votes, so it's democratic, but then he immediately was like, well... And then there's a correlation. I, I, I think it was just part of the story. There's no correlation to anything. In this case, he ended up just being like, okay, cool. Let's just let go of Wilbur Soot and Tommy in it because they're just going to cause trouble anyway. This is like the first instance where someone actually had full power and utilized it to shift how people played in the in the Dream SMP, which led to even more escalation of stuff to the point where you see where it's like we're going to kick out this guy because they're going to cause trouble. Yeah, it's around there. But yet they're going to cause trouble anyway. I have the blade. I have the blades. So this is when they introduce Technoblade. Technoblade in. And I will almost state that once he got involved, that's when things got more serious. That's where things got real. I don't think it's where things got real, but it's where it led to more story plots. And this is my speculation. But basically because Technoblade is so good at having just these weird dramatic moments, when you watch the Dream SMP, it, he has these moments, but then it's overshadowed by his goofiness of subscribing to Technoblade. Uh, basically, he's always breaking the fourth wall as a sort of a joke. Yeah. But this is where, once again, Sadis does such a great job of pulling all of those great moments out and compiling it in such a very dramatic video. And I think this one, especially the fall, this is where she ends up exceeding that expectation because A, she's utilizing a better program. Apparently before she, with the, the phone program she was using before to draw, you could tell night and day the differences, that the lines that she's using. She's still utilizing the same technique that she's been using like right now in this scene Technoblade with the crossbow has more shading has darker lines is more prominent that's where everyone's eyes are pulled but then Dream is in front with the sword pointed essentially towards the viewer but he's lighter yeah it's more fading she's playing very well with the perspective she was already doing that a lot with the Dream SMP war but she sort of did that due to the limitations and like now it's like kind of become part of her stop but it works so well but this is where she starts really pushing getting the details a lot finer getting the looks having more shadows having more looks of it i would almost say that it's still sketchy but less sketchy than it was before when i saw this video it's when i immediately was like holy shit i am exceedingly impressed with the stuff that she does yeah she's clearly like now she has a new tool now she's first she's doing what she already knows from the previous method and now she's expanding into this new tool but now she can tell things are smoother because she has more space to draw than apparently than a small screen you know she has a bigger pad digital pad or whatever that conversation is you're using words 
but the thing about this world, Tom. So we're coming up to like how she just she continues with the transition as if there's like a camera angle moving from one scene to another. She like ups the game. She was already doing that with the Dream SMP stuff, but yes. like here she she like even steps even more forward with that. Well, yeah, right now it's like things in the video here is quicker from what I recall with her first video or even the Hawkon. Of course, Hawkon she smooths it out with like like anything. But here, yeah, now that you pointed it out, yeah, it does like a quick scene shift, but as if the camera's rotating one moment to another, to one thing or another. And I think that like that's amazing how she's she basically builds a scene with a camera through her her drawings. It, it just transitions smoothly from one scene to another to another, and as if a camera is going through each point throughout of it. It's not just a, a left to right type of camera thing. It I, I almost feel like I'm in a center and it's actually going in circles. This is why like these moments are really amazing. Here's a good example of her still kind of doing a quick sketch. Technoblade is very loosely drawn compared to I would say Tommy in it that's jumping towards him. But I would say these lines are still even sharper than she had done before. So like you could tell she's taking advantage of the new tool, but still basically doing the same things that she used to do to try to really get motion to flow without her spending, I would say, too much time on it and still just doing a great job. Like we're pausing right now. We're analyzing a scene where we should really not be spending so much time on one scene. But when it flows, but that's OK. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When it flows animatically, it's great. Obviously, if you pause it, you're like, haha, doodle. But this is where I think she's really stepped up to the point where this is where she builds off of with her later work. When we saw the hog hunt, that's really like where she's already evolved it really works uh, improving on shading really improved on lighting and this already you can tell like this is a great step up from her last one she's evolving she's still keeping with her style and really uh moving forward with it yeah well yeah it's definitely consistent with science of evolution it's great it adds to an entire artful style brand yeah right. we've had that conversation we've spoken that language in the pit so i'm guessing it's they had overtime. a fight previously on to a new day a new plot new drama it was quickly indicated in this it'll be more mentioned in the next animatic but basically that's when things didn't go so well at the festival and so for the fall there it's only shown really quickly festival yeah they they have a festival to celebrate democracy okay jay schlatt invites technoblade but doesn't invite tommy in it or wilbur and ends up getting used to basically kill tubbo and so that's where tubbo later on gets the scars on him okay i think we can see the scene where Tubbo gets kind of captured but I just want to like reflect this scene as well very thin lines very sharp work of both characters the back of Technoblade the front of Wilbur having very minimal kind of light sources but like hey there's a light source above them let's have the lines go about the characters and then she didn't have to but she just kind of did the the caves a bit and have the lighting there as well very simple and subtle but so much depth for such a simple moment it's so good and to answer you why they were in the pit um tommy and it started whining because of what technoblade ended up doing to tubbo tubbo basically sort of forgave technoblade but uh, like after the fact tommy still take issue so wilbur is just like hey let's just get into a pit and fight and so what did technoblade do he basically beat the crap out of tommy in it good job you beat a child um <laughs> mind you they're all young adults but tommy is the youngest in this and I think uh, during this time well he's like the TPT teenager yeah he, he's at this time he's still uh, a child and I think Tubbo is the other but just to give context <laughs> there are kids involved so they're what mid early teens so there's two that are still kids that are reaching in before becoming 18 and becoming an adult. Yes. Okay. The others are between 20 and 30 as of yet. I think the oldest one that eventually fills the joints, everyone calls him like old man. Okay. Let me just go to the scene where Tebo is freaking out. Was that Tebo? Oh, actually, it's coming up. But to destroy Manberg. <laughs> <laughs> Tubbo was basically helping Pogtopia while being an administrator as well during the whole events. Okay. And Tubbo was helping organize everything, but basically Jay Schlatt was like, you're basically playing both sides. You're basically a traitor. You're getting killed. And he basically peer pressures Technoblade to kill him. However, in a great Technoblade fashion, Technoblade goes a little above that and not only kills Tubbo, but kills 
Jay Schlatt as well. And the way things work in the Dream SMP is everyone has three canon lives. Okay. The only exception when he shows up is Filza because he's a AKA a hardcore player because he does a lot of hardcore Minecraft playing. He's the only person who has just one canon life. Okay. So he has to be super careful. Yeah, basically. So just so that people are understanding when people die, they don't die yet. And when you say canon, it's more like selectively for the story canon and not exactly not like random accidental creeper explosions like stuff like that oh playing. yeah totally <laughs> tommy would have been dead ages ago tubbo would have been de- dead ages ago they make joke of that on the smp all the time where it's just every time someone dies they're like canon 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 <laughs> so again that's <laughs> okay. that's what makes these really good in regards to how the the stories kind of evolve because you have moments where they're they're very lively they're they're having fun and they're just like fooling around and then you get to a point where like when they really do the the role playing the role playings are really well done and i think that's why like there's so much that can be taken out of this and saddest really exemplifies kind of the really nice role playing that everyone is doing and how great it is that like this group of people are able to come together and do these these. Others do it all the time, but I find like this really kind of stepped up once like things moved along. Because before when this started, it was really just Dream and friends playing Minecraft. But then the minute that Tommy got involved, it gave a bit of complexity to it. And then it started becoming a little bit more entertaining because it's like, all right, what's Tommy going to do this time? What's going to happen now? Then eventually added Wilbur, it started becoming more role playing than just really off the script. To provide a story. Yeah. And while a lot of the stuff is still very very improv for the most part they do have story beats they'll know like we have this thing that we'll try to do but let's have this story beat going and then just do whatever so like start of this festival it doesn't really get shown in the animatic because like sad is just really trying to pull the whole bits and pieces yeah the whole seriousness of things well she's essentially drying a trailer she's not doing telling she's not the mo- actual movie she's just a trailer of of a movie that doesn't exist, but it would be awesome if that is that that's great one. But yeah, she creates trailers for those storylines. So fun fact that originally she was intending to call these movie trailers. I sort of like a joke that this would have ended up being a movie from the Dream SMP, but then she dropped having that naming convention for her videos and just called it an animation or an animatic. Okay, makes sense. So I thought that was a fun little tidbit I found out. What you're saying is during the festival, it removes the expectation that she'll create a movie, so she just avoids the question. I don't think anyone's expecting her to do a movie but people are silly (laughs) however i would totally support her making a movie because i think that'd be cool absolutely but i think when you're limited to like the already recordings of a bunch of vlogs there's only so much you can do right oh i'm sure she's pulling for so much content to pull from especially when in between it's just a lot of them laughing and saying cringe and a bunch of other things what's interesting is like during the festival there's this whole like bit scene where you end up having technoblade using tridents to fly out out of the water and into another water pool as sort of a joke and then fundy traps him and there's this <laughs> long bit with fundy where he's like oh yeah i, I could finally say it once you're dead that i've killed technoblade technoblade does die and then technoblade just stays in the water because he has a helmet of respiration and he just makes this long-winded joke of people to subscribe to him <laughs> those moments it's like oh please i'm about to die make sure that uh, you subscribe before i die so he makes this whole joke he ends up eating food while he's in the water so he doesn't die (laughs) and funny just freaks the fuck out uh which is like god damn it i'm trying to do something fancy because i never get to do anything i want to be more than a pretty face there's actually a fun (laughs) video about that whole scene and it's super funny but even to the point where technoblade just like oh man i need to get a glass of water i'm gonna i'm gonna leave for a second and he literally (laughs) leaves to get a glass of water to come back he's like oh man i was thirsty when i was drowning Super fun bit. All those moments, super fun to watch. That's what really makes the actual like watching the live stuff really fun. But when you've got people that really take the serious moments and really piece it together, it's so much more serious than it should be. But it's just because it's how it's cut from really great moments throughout the whole SMP. Yeah, so this is where Tommy and Tubbo hugging it out. So this is basically right after Tubbo got killed. You can see that already he started. It's a loose drawing showing that like he's got scarred from that moment. And moving forward, she retains the the fact that like he's scarred now because of what had happened during that moment because he's not officially dead. So they treat it as he survived, but he scarred from that moment on. He's all traumatized looking. Hence, he needs a hug. Does it get a hug? My unfinished symphony. (laughs) 
And so you have Jay Slat. His whole like. Okay, is it Jay Slat or Jay Slap? Like slap. Slat. 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 Yeah, Slat. I didn't realize he has horns. Where is that from? His character always kind of had the interpretation that he's like a ram or like the devil sort of thing. So they just really played on that idea. What's that D&D race? The Minotaur? Oh, not the Minotaur. There's a currently D&D. Oh, Tieflings. Okay, sure. Everyone who knows about D&D, you will understand. <laughs> D&D Tieflings. Fun fact, he got invited into the SMP without Dream knowing, and the minute that Dream oh. found out, he kicked him out. And so <laughs> that's what was super fun is that he ended up coming back at like a critical moment during this period, and then he ended up winning and then just taking over everything. So many people give Jay Schlatt a lot of criticism. He is a very outgoing person, and he kind of really toes the line of what a lot of people would find acceptable or not. But one thing you cannot deny is the guy knows how to really play scenes. His vocals are phenomenal. He's always very animatic <laughs> in an animation. His energy <laughs> is always outgoing. He's always full of funness. And then in between, like there's always those in between where he's just playing around his character. He plays this like really funny, lazy guy who can't swim. So every time he has to cross a river, he just drowns until like someone like helps him <laughs> get out. So, like, he never dies, but he's always like, oh, God. Talk about sticking to the role. Yeah. To the character. So he does such a great job. He's very fun. I think he's so underrated. Or more importantly, I think, especially during the Dream SMP, so many people got hooked to hating him. And I think the minute that you can play a character that is supposed to be evil and everyone visibly is offended, but like, oh, you're evil. You suck. He did his job. And I have to commend him 100% on that stuff. This is why like throughout the fall, all the scenes that where he starts talking, they sound off so well. And Satis does a great job of taking the music, this song especially, where it pumps up all those moments. She puts him front and center when the music starts climbing. Well done. Super great. It just complements even more the fact that she She's refined a lot of the way she does her drawings. I will admit, though, this scene, I think his arms are a little too long. But that's also because we've been no. looking at the scene a little too long as well. But otherwise, this is really at the point of nitpicking. Yeah, whenever it's quite different from what I envision how he looks like from his Minecraft character avatar. Because it looks like one of those like politicians that gets drunk blood and it's like, yeah. And, and oh, then, he and, does. And he plays on that. It's so good. But then we see like a status and interpretation of it. And it's like, oh, that's, he's more in shape than I thought he was. <laughs> okay, I've got two more parts that I want to show. And then uh, I think we'll get a general wrap up of what we thought. Sure. One thing that I wanted to bring up. <laughs> Uh, are you happier? Dream. Sadness must get like permission for for sure has an arrangement with two way. Because she's using two way for a lot of their videos. I mean, I, I'll have to step in. Two things. Let's actually go with the point that you mentioned about two way. I don't think she originally had like an official agreement. I think she she asked for permission. They said okay, and I don't think they realized how big it was gonna get. Yeah. Once it grew, especially with this video, a lot of people from the Dream SMP kind of flooded two-way from it. And so later on, I don't know if the next one she got permission, but for sure for the hog hunt, that one was exclusively made so that it would work with the stuff that she's animating. So like they, they went out of their way to make sure that it was going to work with what she was animating. Great job. I like that there's that synergy where like a musician and an artist can work together to build something so amazing. Now. Something that isn't amazing, and I will criticize Dream for this, is the fact that this scene was so dull in how he spoke. And I think this is the only scene in all of this animatic. Dream is just like, um, I have to, I have to have stop you, Tommy. And it's just like, no, 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 you did so much better before, especially in the last one. It was so much more dramatic. He's the one who ends the last uh, animatic. He's the one like at the war. He's like, you're dead. So much more serious. This is what kind of happens when you ad hoc. And say, like, eh, yeah, I think this is the one moment where he could have shined even more, especially in a point where like Wilbur's, I'll be your vassal. Just give me the stuff you need and I'll do it. And like Dream is just like, OK, like, eh, sure, <laughs> sure. Why we'll not? We'll do it. OK, I I'm shooting the shit uh, at this point, poking holes uh, on it. But I just 
He's shown to be such a very energetic person when he does his man hunts and all this stuff. When I saw this scene, well, those are different. I mean, in the case of Mana, he's not really scripting. He's just doing. He's in the moment, and that sort of makes sense. Where, but if you try to follow a story, then it may feel the energy is different. So I could sort of understand that the difference. And I agree, but it's just funny that this is a role play SMP, and I think that he's the only one, at least in this moment, he kind of like went a little too monotone. Otherwise, I love the scene because basically this is Wilbur going like crazy at this point. Like this is where he's starting to going like, oh, I can't believe this happened. Well, if I can't have it, that's it. Everyone is losing it. Let's be bad guys. I'm a villain. Am I a villain? Yes. <laughs> yes, and more so. You stole my country. I'm going to blow it up because no one should have it without me. Uh -huh. The last thing I want to mention is the last video I was indicating how Sadis is really good at developing her characters more and more and evolving events that happen from one to another within her own animatics. The one thing that she has done, I After think it's seven. early on. Killing Schlatt wouldn't do anything. We're, we're in the right. I mean, yeah, I'm always in the right. So. <laughs> <laughs> then let's be the bad guys. Right. Time ain't being yeah. full of it. Maybe not the best scene for that, but she just started putting braces on Tommy. I think she kind of... Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, okay. this one, no, maybe not the best. There's a scene where she, you see him more predominantly with the braces. Oh, there we go. I think I found I'm it. Always but you're, being a you're being a monster. You try to manipulate me to do stuff. I mean, I'll do it anyway because I'm Tommy freaking in it. Yeah. I like causing trouble. Yeah. But Wilbur, <laughs> you're turning crazy, man. <laughs> Which is, you're right. This, that, that, that's where it's kind of funny because Wilbur's the one who's like feeding off of Tommy's craziness. And then Tommy's the one going like, whoa, whoa, I'm crazy. But you're a little, you're even worse okay, now. You're getting too crazy. You're going, you're supposed to be my moral compass. But now you're just going off the rails. Yeah, it's almost like the same people on the same coin. But like one person's going, I think I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> This is something like she just developed herself. And I, I'm wondering if it's because she realized she could do a lot more with the program that she had compared to before. But like, this is where you're kind of showing. We're experimenting characteristic. You're seeing more the like she's developing the fact Tommy in it is a younger person. And then Tubbo looks very youngish as well with like sort of his hairstyle. So they're retaining that. But I love that like she added braces and it's just these little details that work really well. And I kind of loosely mentioned that that's what she was going to eventually do. And she retains that moving forward with sort of the, the character design that she has and then everyone moving forward that a serious action that had occurred during the series and especially during her animatic she's retained that on them one final thing that was brought up in the comment section and i actually did not notice this a moron tommy the thing is you're using words but the thing about this world tommy is that the only universal language so really love technoblade and like they they do a great job of doing the design because again in the dream smp he's a pig it's just a pig face so he has sort of like this pig mask on him dream he's just a little white blob on a green body they put a mask on him to kind of represent the like still the humanity of the the characters but really in a serious way fun fact mentioned in the comment section i was really glad to take a look at this for myself and this will be in i think a quick video we will look into maybe in, com in combination of other videos but before this was done a few videos back she did an animatic of technoblade versus dream and during that fight technoblade had long braided hair but near the end of the fight dream cut technoblade's hair so that he ended up having shorter hair at that point and ever since that point of that animation when she brought back technoblade she didn't keep the long ponytail she ended up retaining the short cut of the hair with her animatics so hinting to that that thing happened exactly this is where these moments are so interesting in details where she is retaining these moments constantly within her work and it's just such a great job so good love the details that she she brings onto it this is my favorite of all of her videos because this is where she's really demonstrated her evolution of her art style her evolution of the use of the music and really integrating it very well really improving on taking the serious moments and like how she's that she hasn't navigated as well improved the flow the transition this is where i would say moving forward she fine tunes what she already has improved greatly in this moment that's basically my final thought of this she's just so good really well designed i'm just i just love it's violence and we've had that conversation. everything that she's done we've spoken that language in the pit it's over time it's on over to time. a new day a new i like how you switch from like tommy to wilbur in the, in the scene right there so what are your final thoughts 
of the fall of the Dream SMP animatic. I mean, overall, the flow, it feels like the flow is a bit quicker from our previous video and then later videos. Agreed. While she's definitely improved on the visual and it's getting there to the latest end point. I don't know, it's just a nice continuation and it's definitely involving taking the motivation as to improve her craft and showing what she can do. And then I'm really curious, I like pass that hog on, like how far she's going to go. Yeah, the fall is definitely shows that direct she's going Ooh, in the flipper style. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, then let's be the bad guys. Let's be the bad guys. I've mentioned it. This is my favorite. I'm happy to have gone through this one. I'm not saying that the other ones are worse by any stretch. I would actually say the next one being, I think, the one that she does the best visually. What is it, the next one called? The next one is called Donna the 16th. Okay. It's the, the animatic that this is when all shit hits the fan. Everything blows up. Everything is dead. So much shit. Post-apocalyptic war. Right no, not that bad. Okay. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> I can just see them nuke the server at some point. Yes. She hasn't done an animatic of that yet. Okay, so it does happen. Got it. <laughs> uh, yes. So this is where I really fell in love at the fall. Fell in love with how she just immediately improved. And this just like took me away. The next animatic that she does, I think the word I'll use is the beauty of it comes out a lot more. But this one is still my favorite just because I got to experience the Dream SFP war and then really see this improvement, this huge jump in kind of quality. Not from the fact that she wasn't a talented person in the get go, but the fact fact that she's like i think this tool is limiting me on stuff and then moved to yeah. use another tool and immediately was like cool i'm gonna still do the things i do but i can do it better now and yeah. it's so good compared to the last one there's not one scene in the fall where i feel that it is too sketchy whereas sketchy. in the dream <laughs> SP war i think i mentioned it before where i said it's too blocky and this one i think it's smooth through and through even when i like i can tell where she has the, her sketchy moments but it is still very smooth and really utilized in moments where it makes sense to use it, especially when there's all like the camera movements, the transitioning between one scene to another, also transitioning between colors as well. She does a great job in this. This is why this is my favorite. Awesome. So I think this is where we're going to wrap it up with this one. Yeah. And if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more stuff from us, then you can go down below, click subscribe, like, ring that bell. And yeah, and we're also on the, some of the other social medias, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Thank you very much so far for everyone that's added a comment absolutely comment down below we love answering everyone that gives us a comment i always look forward and hearing the great comments and even some of the additional tidbits that we might have actually missed so if there's anything that you feel that we've missed or haven't brought up of our reaction please comment down below let us know i would be ecstatic to respond and pretty sure morticia would respond too i don't respond as often but i try to <laughs> occasionally i'm aware of the comments i see the comments i see yeah yeah we're, we're, we're i have overwatch we're both we're both <laughs> looking at it but if you ever want to direct a message towards either Morticia or myself, Wingless Dragon, don't hesitate. Just go, hey, Wingless, this. Hey, Morticia, that. And we'll be glad to answer you directly. Absolutely. So until next time, see you all later. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Me.